and my latest project that I've been working on is exploring the files from the 1994 game Quarantine. I think Crazy Taxi but mixed with Doom, with the ability to eject passengers for a mission that you don't want to finish, and watch them splat on the floor in front of you, it's all very gory. I really loved this game as a kid, uh, despite the frustrating controls. The maps were huge, and I loved that you were given free reign to just explore the city as a sandbox, picking up missions where you saw fit. Unfortunately it's locked to 320 by 240 and the game speed's tied to the processor that it's running on. So it's comically fast and unmanageable on modern computers uh, and you have to slow it down using DOSBox but then it has issues of its own with slowdown. My original aim was just to create a 3D image of the maps just so that I could show people the, the size of them. But in working through the game files and with a healthy dollop of feature creep I ended up making a graphic and map editor for the original game and the ability to export maps and textures into 3D models that I can view in Blender, browser via JavaScript and then now in Doom. My ultimate aim is creating the maps, creating Quarantine London mod for the original game, a la GTA London, and being able to play the game in higher res via the Doom engine. Note that I haven't done this before, so I'm sure that a lot of the steps that I've taken uh, have shortcuts and better ways of doing them, but I was working it out as I went along. The first thing that I was looking at is the map. By opening the .map files and converting these, you get a 2D array of all of the tiles that the game uses. If you look at this in a text editor or put it in Excel, you can see a basic shape to the maps with zeros being empty sectors and all of the numbers referring to a tile or like a block with buildings or floor layouts. So each of the numbers gives you a different layout for that specific tile, but with no way to see what the numbers referred to, it's difficult to know what you're seeing. Numbers go from 1 to 65,500 35 so that's a 16 bit unsigned int. I created a web page to show this grid and then got it to highlight each of the numbers in a random color so the color doesn't tie to anything but um, it's just so that you can see uh, a repeat uh, and it gives uh, an idea as to the map layout and then I use that um, extensively for all of the further tests so I added the ability to change a number click save and it would overwrite the original map so that you can test it. Um, by then going to new game over and over you can see the changes that you've made uh, and I could test what each of these numbers referred to. I noted that there's 128 model setups per map but that each of these has set a multiple uh, texture setups but I still wasn't sure exactly how that tied together. To automate that process I created a Python script so that's using Py Auto GUI. So I created a little testing area with a single tile and then a save state pointing at that from each direction. So pointing from the north, pointing from the east, pointing from the south, pointing from the west. And then I left my PC for a day running, uh, setting that tile number, loading each save slot in order, taking a screenshot, then loading the subsequent uh, save slot. And then once it did a full loop, it upped the number by one and then restarted that process again, which gave me thousands and thousands of images to look through. And I found from that that there's four sets of textures for each tile layout. So it does the tiles 0 to 127, repeat that for the next 128, and then it puts a new texture set on. And for the next 256, so two loops of 128, it then uh, uses that next texture set. Then the next 256 have another texture set, and the fourth uh, set of 256 have a, a fourth one. So there's four, four texture sets in total. Uh, the flaws and the sprites look to remain static for each of these loops. Next thing to look at was the textures. So the game has two types of textures, .spr files, which are used for the walls and objects, and .img files, which are used for the floor and the HUD. So I saw on the website moddingwiki.shikadi.net that the img files are, to quote, GIF files with image X instead of GIF 87A at the start. So loading these in a hex editor, changing that, can confirm that, yep, yeah, you can then load them as GIFs and you can split them up. So the, it's like a, a grid of uh, floor textures and then you can split them up. Next thing to look at was the text files. So this is the, the script for the passengers. Again, from the moddingwiki.shikadi.net, it explained that if you XOR each of the bytes in the file, you get the output of the text. So I've got all of the text there for speaking to the passengers when them setting missions and stuff, uh, and you can edit that and change it. 
The sprites cause me a lot more issues. So if you open them, you get a big block of hex. And then in a similar manner as the map, I started by assigning a random colour to each of the, the numbers. So converted it into decimal numbers, assigned a random colour to each of those numbers, and then got it to show them as a as a grid, uh, and then played with the, the width and height of this grid. And that showed that there was a block of data at the start, if you cut that out and then played with the width, you started seeing shapes appear. So the, the, the actual sprite files for, it was one of the cars that I was playing with, first of all. Doing this a few times and then looking at the start section that I cut off, I'd worked out that, first of all, it lists the, the number of files, the number of images within that .spr file. And then the next numbers are the width and height for each of the images within that. So say there's seven um, images, it would have seven width, height, width, height uh, sections, and then the, the image data. There's no terminator for the data within the images themselves. So at that point, I had the images uh, and I could work with them, but I didn't know which colours to assign each of the numbers to. I was at a bit of a loss to work out how to identify the palette to know which colours to assign to each of the numbers. Uh, when I was playing with editing the floor textures from the GIFs, and I accidentally saved the GIF with a different colour palette, and I noticed that all of the uh, sprites for that particular level, but not the other levels, um, broke. They're all just random colours. And I worked out that actually if you export the palette from the GIF for that particular map, uh, so if you're on the first map, you export the, the first floor um, tile GIF, um, and you use that same palette on the sprites, you then have the correct numbers. So using this tool, I added the ability to export textures, import textures from elsewhere, and also add the ability to put numbers over the tiles, put borders and numbers over the tiles, which I could then uh, save, and when I'm playing the game, I can identify which tile maps with which um, wall. So my next step for making the 3D map was to model all of the walls in Blender. Uh, so I pulled up the screenshots, kept loading the game, and went through painstakingly creating e each wall. Then using those 3D models, I was able to make a 3JS visualizer for the map. Um, however, this wasn't using any of the looped tile sets, uh, so it was, like condensed it down to just show uh, 1 to 128. Um, unfortunately, then I realized that each of the maps within quarantine has another set of 128 models and each of those has four tile definitions so it was just going to be unfeasible that i could model all of these with that in mind i started working on trying to understand how the game itself uh, created these tiles in the end i've not used any of the blender files because i then started work on how to extract the tile definitions from the game data itself whilst working on the other stuff i noted that the .blk files within the folder are named per city and if I change the name of the second map to that of the first I notice that the tile layouts changed so I had an idea that this was affecting the way that the tiles were generated. So looking at that it's one huge hex file per map um, which I had no idea how to read so I started by printing off each of these and going through the hex manually trying to work out what each of the parts did and I noticed that within it it had sections which related to the numbers that were seen on the walls so if you had a wall that was 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 5 for example you could search that within the hex so then I could work out which tile related to which particular section of the hex so this is the first tool that I created which got the the hex turned it into decimals and then I had the ability to set and you know, make any of the changes to it set it, save it into the game, and then reload the game and see what changed. Working back from there, I worked out what a bunch of these did uh, and created little icons for it. So icons to pass these uh, numbers as images and which ones meant uh, a movement of a texture or which ones meant uh, a rotation, etc. And then created this tool, which let me visualize all of the hex from start to finish um, and then break it down as to the start and end of each uh, of each tile. Uh, and I worked out that it has, first of all, set a section which talks about where the floor is then a section which talks about where the walls are. Um, and then it has all of the uh, wall textures um, and the floor textures with the different loops. Then it has a gap, like a padding space, um, and then it has the um, the sprites that are in that particular place. So like the positions and height of the sprites and then the, the image. 
So looking at the other tools, looking at the very start of the file, um, I worked out that it actually defines there the number of tiles and then per, per each tile, the number of floors, the number of walls um, and the number of sprites. Uh, and I was then able to create some other tools which would break it down. So per tile, it'll show me the different uh, texture sets. Yeah, so set one, set two, set three, set four. And then I was able to create a, a tool which visualized these. So looking at these screenshots, you can see this is looking um, west. So this looking this way, uh, this is the, the tile layout, but in, in kind of 2D. Um, uh, this was when I was trying to work out what some of the values meant. I had particular problems with the rotation of them. And because this is in fast API, I've got a nice swagger set up with all of the different uh, tools that I went through trying to get this working, uh, trying to get the information from it. Um, and it also meant that I could do a, a 3JS preview of each of the tiles one by one. And I can swap and show them for the different maps, for example. And then I was able to export that and create the full map from that. And then on to Doom. So I wrote some scripts that will use the uh, knowledge that I learned from doing all of the previous extraction. And it'll extract from a base quarantine folder. It'll extract all of the map data, all of the sprites, all of the textures, everything, uh, and put it into a format that Doom can then read. So going from Doom, I've done it in a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, I've got it so that it will just generate the whole map at once so that you're able to see that. But in Doom, that's so many different uh, things on the screen uh, that it's unable to, to cope with it. So I wrote a, another way of doing it where it works it in tiles so the x number of tiles around you uh, are generated and, and it's regenerating each as you move around in this video you can see four of the the maps um so I'm, i've got it broken down uh, by the video of it playing in game note there's no enemies in there at the moment but the the maps and the the objects are in there uh, and then i've also got little preview windows which show the same map in the doom editor and uh, another uh, that shows the the map itself in my little html front end for it the way that the doom is handled every wall is actually a, an actor so think like uh, a, a doom enemy um with the the sprite uh, so when it's generating it, it if it's generating a, a wall that's four four textures long it'll actually be four items that are that are in the game so when you see the highlighted sections uh that's you, you're seeing the each of those as, a, as an individual sprite i also did some further tests to see if using GZ Doom. This is running in Zandronum at the moment, but using GZ Doom, I did do some tests to see whether it worked better to have the full map generated in advance and then use portals between each tile. The problem with Doom is that the walls themselves don't block the view of the game itself. So you're viewing the whole map every time you load it. Um, by separating it into separate sectors, I'd hoped that you could apply uh, portals to the edges of each line um, into the next square, but unfortunately that didn't go anywhere. So this seems the best way to do it at the moment. Um, if you could do it by tile by tile uh, with the 3D model of that entire tile generated, uh, but because each tile has four different texture sets, um, it starts to get very large, whereas this way um, you just have to have the individual wall textures uh, and it generates it on the fly. I think that this is nearer to the way that Quarantine itself is doing it. It does result in some clipping as you move in around the map, but that doesn't really affect the gameplay in any way, and I'm sure that that could be optimised. As for the Quarantine London mod, uh, so far I've got a bunch of ideas, but I've just tested it with importing a, a texture for, for one of the walls. So I've got a, a Greg's sandwich shop here, uh, and I've also imported the Trotter uh, three-wheeled wagon from Only Fools and Horses. Okay, so that's it. That's where I'm up to. Uh, I created a uh, Reddit subreddit, r slash quarantine modding. Uh, if anyone else is interested in modding the original game or trying to work out how it works, uh, I'm very happy to talk about this. It'd be great to, to get a little community of uh, people who are interested in the game. Thanks a lot.